in Santa Monica, inside Hollywood Smoke. Welcome to another edition of 10 Count. I'm Steve Kim, joined by Doug Fisher, editor-in-chief of Ring Magazine, and Michael Baca of UCN Live. Guys, let there be peace in the Middle East. Uh, I, I think this is as big as the Camp David Accord, <laughs> or not. But it seems like Bob Arum and Al Heyman are at least simpatico publicly. They have come to a resolution, uh, some sort of settlement in terms of their lawsuit. Mike, what happened to Bob Arum saying, we're going to find out where the dead bodies are. What happened? What happened? We don't know because they won't <laughs> give us information. <laughs> but, yeah, they, they settled their lawsuit. Um, it's one less lawsuit Al Heyman has yeah. to worry about now. But, um, you know, in the reports, uh, the, I believe it was the L.A. Times article, they said possibly they could work together. I'll believe it when I see it. Mm -hmm. Doug, I know there's been a lot talked about and i think this is speculation and i've been told that this is not true and thankfully that mayweather pacquiao was part of this agreement i i'm led to believe that it isn't and you know what i'm very thankful for that let yeah. them come to a settlement don't voice that uh, that on the public yeah again. i Jeez. i hope not but <laughs> within the industry other promoters that's what they thought as yeah. soon as before it was publicly announced when, when it was just a rumor going through the industry um other promoters were saying, okay, well, this means that there's going to be a second Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao fight. Um, I don't want to think that, and that just might be my own bias. <laughs> no, it's not. It it's, might, okay. It's all you know. of ours, actually. Uh, but I, I think that um, it has to do with the, um, the money situation with Top Rank. I, I, I have to wonder if, financially speaking, um, they're not as in uh, as good a place as they were maybe two years ago, and there's been rumors within the industry Doug. that there's some discord within that company, and you, we all know that uh, the, the Mayweather-Pacquiao-Tim Bradley rubber match did poorly. Yeah, I mean, they the lost Pacquiao. money. I yeah. heard yeah. 12 and a half yeah. million. Yeah, um, yeah. That, Manny Pacquiao-Bradley 3, that, that was a pay-per-view where Top Rank had to have uh, taken a bath. If they paid you know, Pacquiao what they were supposed to pay him, and I know Pacquiao always owes Top Rank money, but you know, even if you're just paying 15 million of 20 million, that might be 15 million they didn't have. So that could have been a factor in uh, Doug, Bob Arum offering the olive branch. That Mr. wasn't Al. a bath, that was a blood bath. Right. And, and we all tried to tell Bob. <laughs> that was a drowning. <laughs> that we don't need Police Academy 15 here. I, I yeah. mean, I'm not gonna throw a benefit or feel sympathetic to Bob when I think everyone told him nobody wants to see this. Uh, I've heard two things, that maybe that Al Heyman just paid the legal fees of Bob Arum and Moroso and Petroselli do not come cheap, or maybe they actually got some lump sum of money. And here's the most interesting part, as you mentioned, Mike, that they will work together on dates to make fights. I think this has been one of my big criticisms of the PBC is the exclusionary nature of it. Now, if they actually open up the doors and we get to see, let's say, just in theory, Terrence Crawford against an Adrian Broner yeah. or Danny Garcia, now we've got something that actually helps boxing. Absolutely, and Top Rank is kind of getting shut out by HBO this year. Yeah. Uh, financially, HBO isn't you know, what it usually is. And for example, they've had to put uh, Terrence Crawford and Victor Postol on a HBO pay-per-view. Now, we'll see it, like we said, if it happens, we'll see it. But, you know, maybe this can open a door for Bob Arum to get his fighters on network television. Mm -hmm. Who knows? I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibility here. Doug, uh, my understanding is that the Golden Boy lawsuit will proceed. They're yeah. going full steam ahead. But I'm not going to lie to you. No matter what the parameters of the deal are, these guys are multi-millionaires. Um, I, you know, I don't care about their bottom lines. <laughs> but I'm not going to lie to you. There, there was a part of me that was incredibly intrigued being the gadfly that I am. Yeah. I wanted to see the discovery. I wanted to see what was out there and what was going to be uncovered. Right, once there was a case, once there was a trial. Um, absolutely. I mean, listen, um, Al Heyman is, is the mystery man of boxing. I don't think there's ever been a figure this powerful, um, but yet this inaccessible. And um, mysterious. As, and mysterious as, as Al Heyman. There is definitely a mystique around him. and. and People want to know what the what the nitty gritty is yeah, of, yeah. of his, you know, those business details. Um, we'll have to wait. <laughs> you know, yeah. the Golden Boy's uh, lawsuit is, uh, is is still pending, but um, uh, it, there is some hope, though. I, I am I am kind of interested to see if Aram can can actually work with Heyman, and if uh, HBO is willing uh, yeah. to allow Heyman 
back on its airwaves as a major promoter. Um, I would imagine that Bob Arum's fighters who have HBO contracts, and I assume that Terrence Crawford has a has yes. a has a contract with HBO. If Crawford were to fight uh, an Al Heyman advised fighter, it would have to be on HBO. But if it's a top-ranked fighter who does not have an exclusive deal with HBO, perhaps that fighter could fight on one of the PBC's many platforms. Right. I think there's a lot of speculation about what are the what's the ramifications of this. What was agreed upon. Folks, really nobody knows. There's actually yeah. a gag order. It is very tough getting information. There's a lot of speculation. Uh, as they say, the proof's in the pudding, which we'll find out in the next few months. On behalf of Doug Fisher and Michael Baca, this is Steve Kim. To the next segment of 10 Count, goodbye, everybody.